We're told that America is not a Christian nation. We're told that America is, is multicultural. Uh, we're told that America is, is diverse in our thinking. We're told that uh, America does not promote nor support any one religion. Now, we're being inundated with that. As I look around this time of year, something's very, 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 very different. Something is glaringly obvious that we need to talk about because it is so obvious, it's impossible for you to miss it. It's impossible for anybody to miss what's going on. Romans chapter 1 tells us that God has made himself so obvious that the only way you can deal with that is to suppress the truth. But you can't ignore it. It's, it's too obvious. The title of today's message is the first in a three-part series that I want to do titled Understanding Christmas. Understanding Christmas. I want to look today not at just my personal preference of religion. I, I want to just look today, I, I want us to just back up, and I want us to look at glaringly obvious, irrefutable facts. Let's not suppress the truth. Let's just back up, and let's just look at the facts. We in America have a long, long, long list of holidays. The, the truth is, most of us don't even have a clue what the holidays are or what they're really even about. How many times a year do you drive to the bank or the post office or the revenue office and find it closed for some holiday that you didn't even know we were having? I mean, no clue about the thing. I mean, we got Inauguration Day, Martin Luther King birthday, George Washington birthday, Memorial Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Secretary Day, Grandparents Day. I mean, the, the days that we celebrate, I don't have time to read them all. If you took a family photo and wrote a little card and mailed it to your Christmas card list on every holiday, you'd need a full-time employee to handle all of that. So for us to say that this is the holiday season, seriously, America lives in a holiday season. You can't look at your calendar and go down it week by week and not see some special event or some holiday listed for one of those days that week. Here, I just want to show of hands today how many of you have personally driven at some point in time to the bank or to the post office. You were doing your business and you, and you looked up and saw it completely closed and you didn't have a clue what it was closed for. Put your hands up. Everybody in here. Everybody, let me ask you. Go on the street today and ask, just walk up to people and say, what day is Mohammed's birthday? What day is Buddha's birthday? What day is Reverend Moon's birthday? Yet we teach in school that America is not a Christian nation. We refuse to mention Christianity. We're going to fire a teacher for even mentioning Jesus. We're going to take Jesus' name out of all the, uh, all the school uh, plays. It's a holiday play. And, and we got to sing about Santa Claus and reindeer because we can't sing about Silent Night and Come All Ye Faithful. Seriously, America does not support any one religion? S seriously? Now I want you to understand this. T two or three months before December 25th, the stores are decorating. Seriously, America does not support any one religion. Drive down our Central Avenue. Drive, down, drive in front of our courthouse. Drive down Bathhouse Row and drive through every city in America right now. And see if their lampposts, if they are not decorated, if they don't have lights, if they don't have wreaths, if they don't have candy canes. I mean, look, there are no lights in Garvin Gardens on Muhammad's birthday. I mean, it's just not happening. Silver Dollar City doesn't put up lights on Buddha's birthday. Come on, we, we're going to have to understand Christmas. We're going to have to understand what's going on here. Millions and millions of people 
They don't confess Jesus as Lord, yet they put up an evergreen house, uh, evergreen tree in their house. Now, there's only one reason to get an evergreen tree and drag it into your house and put it up. The only reason for that is because it is a symbol of everlasting life that Jesus' birth brings. There's not another reason for doing that. You're going to put a wreath on your door. Find a reason for a wreath. Find, why it, do we decorate with that? I know nobody asks that question, but why do we decorate that? It's the symbol of the crown of thorns. That's the only reason that we've got that circle. Why do we put up lights? There's not another reason except for Jesus is the light of the world. That's where that tradition comes from. Candy cane. Why would you make candy in the form of a cane? They break easy. They're hard to handle. They're hard to package. The only reason for that crook in that candy cane is it's a shepherd's crook. Jesus is the good shepherd. Now, of all the colors in the world, why paint it white and red? Because of the purity of his blood. Uh, that's the only reason of a candy cane at Christmas is the purity of the blood of the good shepherd. There are no presents exchanged on any of the other holidays throughout the year. Why? Where did that tradition come from, from December 25th? God so loved, he gave. So in honor of that, to celebrate that, we give gifts to people that we love. N no one in America is going to drive to the post office on December 25th and be surprised that it's closed. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's understand Christmas. Let's stop acting like it's the holiday season. This is just another one of the... Come on, come on, come on, come on. America does not support any one religion. Tell me America is not a Christian nation. Tell me that America does not cater to, to one or acknowledge one religion over another. Seriously? Now, I don't confess Muhammad as Lord. Therefore, I don't have a clue when his birthday is. I don't confess Buddha is Lord. And therefore, I don't have a clue when his birthday is. The fact is, nobody in America will drive to the bank or the post office on December 25th and be shocked. Now, don't tell me America does not recognize the Christianity that is in the fabric of this nation. The problem for secular thinking America is that the truth just can't be suppressed. It just comes out because it's too obvious. It is too obvious to suppress. All religions are the same. Seriously, you didn't just say that. Have you driven anywhere the last few weeks? Seriously, you didn't just, well, America recognizes no one religion. Seriously, it, you didn't just say that. If you, is your head in the sand? Or you, you got your head in a hole somewhere? Why, but why are government businesses closed on Sunday? There, there's only one reason for that day of the week for government businesses to be closed. And that is because on the third day, on early Sunday morning, that stone was rolled away and a new covenant between God and man happened. We're going to have to understand what Christmas brings to us. We're going to have to understand this. Romans 1 says the only way not to recognize God in our daily lives is to suppress the truth. Because the truth of God is clearly seen. God has made it obvious to all. You know, people say, oh, Tim, I just wish that God would do a miracle that is so spectacular that no one could deny it. I just wish God would come in here and do something so earth-shaking, so spectacular that nobody could deny it. Well, he did. The birth of a baby in a manger from an unknown woman, from an, in an unknown, out-of-the-way, little insignificant town, with no wealth, no prominence, no advertising, a little baby is born in a manger that changed the dating system, the entire calendar for the whole world. And today, every single time you write 2018, you acknowledge that birth, somebody's got to understand Christmas. 
Somebody's going to have to understand Christmas somewhere. All the commercials on TV are at a fever pitch. By the way, this is off the record. Have you ever seen so many car commercials? Do, do people give cars like all the time for a crit? You're going to run out your front door, there's going to be a package with a big red bow on it. Nothing, you know, I told my wife, there's nothing that celebra- nothing that says Merry Christmas like seven years of car payments for you, honey. <laughs> look what I, I told my wife, I said, look, don't surprise me with a car. For, look what I got you. Well, thank you. Every month for the next seven years now, you're going to pay for that. That's the gift that keeps on giving, y'all. I mean, all the clothes commercials, all the toy commercials, all the jewelry ads. I don't know if anybody has thought about it, but nobody is doing that on Muhammad's birthday. Nobody is doing any of that on Joseph Smith's birthday, on Reverend Moon's birthday. Understand, this is not Happy Holidays It's Merry Christmas. This is not the holiday season. America has holidays all year long. I'll just, all of you young people don't know this, but some of the older ones in here do. We still have a calendar that we can look at. And it's a big calendar. It sits on our desk and we can look at the days. And we like to look at it and we turn forward and we turn backwards and we like to have that calendar in our hand. Some of you younger ones don't have a clue what that is. But I was just thumbing through my calendar and I didn't find a week that there wasn't a little, you know how they put the little titles on the day of the, the holiday of that day. Friday. This, this Friday is Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Don't y'all forget, we got to celebrate that. I mean, America lives in a perpetual holiday state. So don't say this is the holiday season. Every week on the calendar is a holiday. It's not happy holidays. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus on December 25th. And that's what this entire two or three months is all about. And somebody's going to have to understand that. The title of this three-part series that I want to do is called Understanding Christmas. Let's look for just a minute. Why is this birthday on December 25th, why is this so, so, so huge? Why is this so huge? All right, let's talk about this. Mankind and all of creation got here by the hand of God. Don't be a fool. Just don't be a fool. Zero, nada, none of science believes in upward mobility of evolution. The scientific law of entropy is taught that science is based on. All, that law says all things move toward disorder without being acted on. The law of entropy is a scientific law. The law of entropy is if you put a pile of broken glass, of rubber, of steel, and plastic, and you put a pile of that out in a mowed field, you come back 500 years later, there will not be a brand new GMC Denali sitting there in a mowed field. We have no time in scientific history of upward mobility and evolution. The fact is, if you put a brand new 2018 GMC Denali out in a mode field and you come back 500 years later, there will be a pile of rubber, broken glass, and a little metal. Not much metal in modern cars today, mostly plastic. That's what will be piled up out in that field. All of science understands the law of entropy, yet when it comes to creation, we want to tell a generation that over a million years, we shook a jug of colored marbles and miraculously they all organized in there in a system of colors. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. No jug of marbles shaken for 500 billion years will eventually line themselves up all in a systematic order of colors. Time plus chance produces disorder 100% of the time. That's why it's a scientific law, the law of entropy. And science operates that. Yet, we're going to teach our kids upward mobility in creation. Come on. Nobody believes that. 
Nobody, only the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Nobody believes that. Nobody's buying that. If you get out of your spaceship on Mars and you step down and you start walking across Mars and you pick up an iPhone there full of data, here's what you will know. A planner has been there, a thinker has been there, a designer has been there, a builder has been there. Atoms didn't bump together over the last billion years and that iPhone fell out. Nobody believes that. Nobody thinks that's even possible. In creation, there is a planner, a thinker, a designer, a builder. God is clearly seen and he's made it obvious to all of us. And only the fools say in their heart, there is no God. And only the foolish are able to suppress the truth. God put mankind here, and he did so in a perfect environment in where there were no aches, there were no pains, there were no sickness, there was no aging, there were no earthquakes, there was no hurricanes. Mankind was created in a perfect environment and created in a relationship with God. And he so loved man that he provided mankind with a choice about that relationship. Man had a choice to live in relationship with God. And thus, living blessed, living prosperous, living an abundantly blessed life. History shows us that man chose a life that God curses. A life separated from God. A life without God. And when man chose dark, light left. When man chose bad, wrong left. When man chose r- r- wrong, light, uh, right left. That's what happened. You can't have true and false. If there's false, it's going to make it all false. When man chose bad, good left. That, that's what happened. Our lives, our bodies were created to be lived in a relationship trusting God. We were created to live in a relationship trusting God. Now, when that was broken, we now have a life in a body that handles and deals with things that our physical bodies weren't created to deal with. Your physical body was not created by God to handle worry, to handle fear, to handle stress, to handle pressure. Now, our bodies are handling things that we were never created to handle because of sin and because of God void that's in our life. And for 4,000 years of mankind's history, we were crying out to God. We were looking for God. We needed God. We were longing for God. But sin had man separated from God. Light and dark can't be in the same room, at the same place, at the same time. Sin separated man from God. Man was created to be in a relationship with God. And so there was a God void that left mankind searching to fill. God God revealed his coming plan of salvation through a temporary perfect animal sacrifice. A perfect animal without spot or blemish could shed blood to only temporarily cover sin. Because with sin, there is a God void. We were created for God to fill our lives and empower us with his presence. A car is created to run on gasoline. Now, void of gas, that car can be beautiful, it can be fun to look at, it can be desired, it can be sought after, but it has no power to run, it has no power to operate. A car has a gas void. For it to operate and for it to run efficient and effectively, you only can put gas in it. Mankind has a God void. We have a God void. And we can put alcohol in it and drugs in it. We can move in with our boyfriend and try to fill that void and that longing and that loneliness and that need. And we can move in with another boyfriend and then we can live with our friend's boyfriend. And we, we're, uh, we can do all that we're doing and try to get more money and try to get a newer car and try to get a bigger house and try to get more prestige. And we're doing all we can do to fill a void in our life 
that only can be filled by a relationship with God. And that only happens through Jesus. To understand Christmas, you got to see that man was created to be in relationship with God. You have to understand that man sinned and broke that relationship. And you've got to understand that there's only one way to the Father God. The problem is, man couldn't be perfect. We couldn't be right. We couldn't be just. And that's the only way to have a relationship with a perfect, right, and just God. We were in a dilemma. We needed a Savior. We needed a Redeemer. We needed a Messiah to do for us what we were unable to do for ourselves. Many religious leaders over the years of history have come and gone. But we didn't need a religious idea. We don't need a spiritual concept. There is a price to pay of sin. And that price of sin could only be paid by somebody who didn't owe it. And wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger, born in a natural physical birth, all man, yet the seed of all God. The egg of a woman was fertilized by the seed of God. And Romans is very clear. Sin nature is passed through the Adamic seed. One man, Adam, sinned, and he passed sin to all mankind. I want you to think about it. Have you ever noticed your first thought is worry? It, it's not faith. You have to get worry out and get faith. Have you ever noticed your first thought is fear? It's not trust. Everything's going to be okay. Your first thought is fear. Have you ever noticed a floor full of toys? Full of toys! And two little infants in there playing, and they both fight over the same toy. We're born in sin. We're born with a sin nature. To understand Christmas, we got to understand laying in that manger is the only hope for a world trapped in a sin nature. I want to do good, but sometimes I don't. I, I want to do right, but sometimes I do wrong. You know, I want to be kind, but sometimes I act mean. Why? I mean, why do I do that? There's a sin nature. There's a sin nature. Who is going to free me from this sin nature that makes me do things that I really don't want to do. A baby laying in the manger, all man and all God. Mankind was hopelessly separated from God. Come on, we got to understand Christmas today. You got to understand Christmas. Washington had a birthday, Columbus had a birthday, Martin Luther King had a birthday. And our government closes for the celebration of these great men and their contribution to our nation. And we should. Other religious leaders have had birthdays. Muhammad had a birthday. Buddha had a birthday. Joseph Smith had a birthday. Reverend Moon had a birthday. But why does every city in America have lights up for the celebration of December 25th? Why is billions of dollars spent on advertising and on purchasing for the celebration of this one day a year, December 25th. No, no, no. This is not the holiday season. America lives from one holiday to the next. Somebody's got to look around. What is so powerfully, powerfully, powerfully? What is so profoundly obviously different that every city in America would put lights up on its main street? What is so powerfully that every person in America knows there's something special about December 25th? What is so powerfully, so powerfully motivated that drives our country for three months of the year? What has happened that is so powerfully impacting that businesses, many businesses do more in the month of December than the 11 months prior to that put together financially? What is so powerfully, profoundly different about this? Matthew 27, 50. 
Then Jesus shouted again and he died. Many religious leaders have shouted and died. But verse 51. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And there's no other holiday. There's no other day that the post office or the bank closes that tore that curtain and gave mankind access to a relationship with God that our sin had removed from us. This is not the holiday season. America has holidays all year long. December 25th is the celebration of Jesus' birth. And the greeting to everybody you see is Merry Christmas. Just look around. I want you to see everywhere you go, every ad on TV. Drive down Central Avenue at night. Every city in America, their streets look like that. No one, no one, no one, not a soul in America will go to the bank on December 25th and be surprised and wonder why they're closed. This is the most life-changing event in the history of the world. Somebody has got to understand Christmas. Y'all stand. Lord, today as we enter into this Christmas season, as we begin to focus and turn our attention as individuals, as homes and families, but Lord, as our entire nation has turned its focus and attention to the celebration of your birth, the celebration of your entrance into our world, Lord, that we not get caught up in all of the hustle and bustle of the celebration, but that we remember what we are truly celebrating. Lord, that each one of us in our hearts today fully understand Christmas. And with that understanding, we celebrate and we celebrate you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.